Hey guys, I'm Brooks. And I'm Mandy. So we're husband and wife entrepreneurs, and we believe that life and business are a giant adventure, and we want to live it with you guys. So let's get to it. All right, guys. Hey, in this episode, we're going to talk about breaking down large projects into smaller chunks. Mm. Ready, man? Brilliant. Yes. Let's do it. So here, here's the thing. We overestimate what we can get done in a week's time. We think we can get all this stuff done. But we underestimate what we can get done in like a year's time. So in like oh, a, yeah. in a year, you know, we're looking at the year and we're thinking, oh, okay, I can do X, Y, and Z. You can get more than you think you can, uh, get more done than you think you can in, in a year's time. But I think it comes with extreme kind of project management and breaking down projects into chunks. Like if you feel overwhelmed with the idea of tackling a large project, Break it down into units, smaller right. units. So, like, that's what we're going to talk about right here. So, there are three kind of segments or sectors where, like, I, I do this or we do this or whatever, and it makes it all work. So, like, in three phases, there's three things. So, like, we've produced events, um, and then I've produced Udemy courses, and then even pr- producing this podcast are mm-hmm. three really good examples of taking something that can be very overwhelming. It's a very large item, a very large project. And by breaking it down into smaller chunks, it makes it manageable. Yeah. And people can will look at you and say, oh my gosh, you're already so busy. How in the world? How in the world did you do that? Like, how did you find time? Like, I have no idea how that works. You know, how'd you do that? The answer is to when you're getting overwhelmed to break it down into smaller chunks. So we're going to talk about right now, this podcast that we're, we're literally recording this episode. This is... Um, going to be, I think this is like our 10th episode. Here's the ironic thing. The podcast is not even live yet. Now, by, right. the t- by the time you listen to this, you'll hear it. But know that when we're recording this soundbite, this clip for what will be episode 10, it's not even a live podcast yet. And so let me go through the process of what we went through for producing this, for producing this show. Um, for starters, I don't like to tell people that I'm going to do something unless I do it. I'm very hesitant to say, I'm going to do X or I'm going to do Y. Uh, I, hey, I'm going to put out a podcast. Um, I, I did this in the past with a, 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 a 50K run that I trained for or whatever. I, I was talking to you about it privately, Mandy. Right. Like, oh, I'm thinking I am thinking I might do this. I think I may do this. And that was the the words I would tell people. When I decided to do it, I did it. Right. I trained for it. I did it. The same thing with this podcast. So very recently, we I put out a post with the image that we're using for our cover image for the podcast, and I let people know that hey, so we're we're doing this thing. You know, we're we're putting out a podcast. We've already recorded eight episodes. Here's kind of what we're going to be talking about, and that was kind of like my introduction into what we're going to do. It's not even live yet, right? But yet I made that post. I felt comfortable to do it because we hit, were far enough down the line and what we have going on that, um, you know, it's a done deal. So here, here are the steps that we broke down in order to do it. I know that when I talked to you, Mandy, it was a very overwhelming project, right? Yeah. I immediately said no. I I, I appreciate that honesty. Yeah. I said, Hey, do you want to do a podcast? No. No. Why? Because we have a lot of stuff going on. Right. Right. We don't have, in my head, we didn't have the time for it. Right. Yeah. We don't have the time for it. We didn't have the time for it. So I made you a deal. I said, hey, if you're willing to sit down with me and record, I'll handle everything else. Are you willing to do that? And you said, yes. And you said, yes. That was phase one, right? So that was me. That's what I had to do with Mandy to get her to say yes. And then I said, okay. And even me, I... even I wasn't saying we're going to put out a podcast. And I don't know if you remember this. I said, hey, we're going to ma- we're gonna record some stuff together. Right. Maybe right. it'll turn into a podcast. Yeah. Maybe we'll make it, con- you know, let, like, let's see what happens. Like, we don't know. We don't know if it's going to be good content until we do it. Uh, and then when we recorded some episodes, I was like, man, that's, that's like valuable stuff. Like, I would get value out of that. So we need right. to share this with other people. Right. And so, you know, internally, we kind of made that decision. So step one was for me to get Mandy on board to be willing to put time in her schedule to sit down and us record. 
Okay. It just seems like podcasts just seem, when you're listening to them, they just seem so easy. Like, oh, just sit down and do it. But I have learned that there is a lot that goes into it. And I think that's what happens with people. I think they like the idea of it. Now, let me let me go ahead and say this as well. There are tools today that make uh, the world of podcasting much easier easier there are uh some apps i don't even know their name i've seen them before uh, but you can literally record just straight from your phone and then upload that podcast if you guys hear that's our mascot that's scratching the floor that's our dog murphy he's scratching he thinks he's going to china digging to china and it, he never gets there and he <laughs> gives up after a little while but he tries he tries so there's some apps um where you can record right now on your phone, upload those, boom, you have a podcast. But the thing with that is that you don't own the data uh, and you're in less control of that. There's also like SoundCloud exists out there. Let me go ahead and tell you that. Um, that you can easily record files, post it on SoundCloud, boom, you have a podcast. Now, if you are wanting a wanting a podcast that pushes out your show to the big players, to Apple, to Google, to other podcast players, then you have to go a different route. You have to do what we're doing, which is record these files and then and then upload them uh, to one of those systems. So that's what we're doing. So it takes more work. It's a bigger project to do that, I will admit. So, so I got Mandy on board with me. Okay, let's call that phase one, okay? Um, step two, I had to research platforms. Research the platforms that we were going to upload our files to right so a big one really old there's um libsyn is a really big platform that's kind of been around a long time since kind of beginning a plat kind of kind of the beginning of, of podcasts there's a number of other ones that have come onto the market i actually think that we're going with a company called simplecast it just looks um really easy to use i've done some research i advise you to go out and do your own research but Simplecast is the company that we have decided on. So that was a step. That was something that we had to decide to do. Okay. You also have to have the proper equipment in order to record a podcast. Now, don't get bogged down. Don't get overwhelmed. It can be it's really simple. So I have, I'm sitting right here with Mandy. We have a laptop that's running this program called Audacity. And in it is hooked our microphone that just plugs straight into my laptop and my laptop reads that we're using a blue Yeti microphone. Um, I mean, we'll put a link to that if you want to check it out, get it. It's been really good. It's very simple. It's easy to use. To me, something that's easy is great. You know, you don't have to adjust all these settings. It basically just has a few simple knobs. It's a plug and play type microphone that plugs in USB into your computer. So, highly recommend it. So, if you are not a uh, audiophile and a professional in equipment, which I am not, get something that's easy to use that's that's user friendly. So Blue Yeti microphone, I definitely suggest. And it makes us feel legit too. It's like this True. big black microphone like you would see in a podcast studio or a, a recording studio. True. I don't know. I like it. True. And uh, this microphone, probably around $100, give or take. You can probably get a used one for a little bit less than that. A new one for, I don't know, I guess maybe a little more than $100. But just say, you know, ballpark $100. And it's it's better quality sound. Now, in the future, we'll probably actually upgrade. Um, we will. And, and actually, so I'm going to I'm gonna fast forward to my number six. I'm actually going to fast oh, forward. Okay. So the location. So mm-hmm. Mandy and I, are we actually have a studio set up with a green screen with a higher quality microphone that I produce some other uh, videos and other content for local businesses in. There's a learning curve there for me to be able to produce that for us. Like I don't know how to use the mixer with the, um, with the computer. I, don't, I have a sound guy, a partner that I work with to produce those videos. He's doing that job. So I would have to learn something additional, and we would have to drive to a different location in order to record. So right. we choose instead to record from our, call it our home office. Our, it's basically our living room. And so every now and then you're going to hear our dog in the background, our mascot right. for our show. But we're willing to do that because, well, we wanted to move forward. This is something that, like, if there's something that's going to stop your progress, for example, like a microphone or the location, just get moving, get going forward, and break your, your project down into chunks and conquer those chunks and you'll be good to go. 
Um, so I mentioned Audacity. So Audacity is the program that we're using to record the file right now. Um, it's very easy to use. I highly recommend it. I had no idea how to use it. So one of the things I had to do before I ever got Mandy to get her schedule to sit down with me was I had to figure out, okay, do I know how to use this? Like when, when I sit down with you and plug in the microphone, I want to make sure that we're we're moving forward. We're recording a file. So I played around one night, recorded some files, inserted some music, and you know, watched some videos on how to use it. And it is fairly user friendly. So okay. I figured it out. Okay. So that was a step. You know, I call that a step in the in the process. That was one of the 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 units that I broke this giant project down into. So you're kind of a techie guy. Do you think someone like me who is non-techie, do you think someone like me could figure it out? Yes. Um, yeah, for, okay. like for sure. Now, you would have to, you would need to watch some videos and be sitting with it to practice, which is exactly what I did. I yeah. watched videos like an overview of Audacity, how to use it, how to do this, how to do that, and I said, okay, what, what are the things I need to know how to do? Okay, right. I need to know how to record from my microphone. I need to know how to like uh, edit those clips. I need to know how to make a new file. How do I insert music and stuff? Like, right. So if you search, YouTube will be a, a great resource for anyone that's looking to you know figure out how to use Audacity. It is a completely free program. Oh. Uh, it's, yeah, it's openware. So there's no, is that the right term? Openware. Anyway, it's completely free. So there's no, uh, there's no cost Open source, excuse me. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Open source. It's an open source software. So there's no cost for you to use that program, so I do highly recommend it. Okay. Um, use whatever you want. But, I, you know, I've learned to use Audacity. It's a major program that people mention and talk about when recording mm -hmm. podcasts and other type things. Now, moving on. Still, still haven't recorded an episode yet. So in this, we're going through our steps. Still haven't recorded one episode yet. What are we going to talk about? Ooh, yeah. That's a hard one. Right? Actually, yeah. So I made now I made you help me with this a little bit. We brainstormed a list of, mm -hmm. okay, what are topics? Like, what are things that we can teach? What are things that we're going through as a business owner couple, um, as married business partners? What are you learning? What am I learning? What projects are we doing? You know, how can we add value to people's lives with mm -hmm. what we're going through? And I said, hey, we're not going to record one episode until we come up with like, 50 ideas right. of what potentially we could even talk about, right? So we did that. We had a Google Doc. We shared it with each other. You know, you threw some ideas on there. Uh, you know, I, I threw ideas on there. Once we hit a certain level, I felt comfortable. Okay, we're not, you know, we're, we're not going to run out of topics. We're going to be okay, so we can talk about these items. And, um, and we did that. So then, now we can record. You're ready. I'm so, ready. Yeah. Really crazy. In this process of creating a podcast, we've been talking now for about 13 minutes on items that we needed to do before we ever hit the record button on one episode for a podcast. Right. So like, just just let that sink in, guys. Like, If you were overwhelmed by a big project, it's okay. It is a big project. You can't just walk into a room and record a podcast. Now, you can hire uh, podcast recording companies to produce your show. Uh, if you have the funds for that, absolutely. Like that's, that's a way to get it done, and I would highly recommend that. If you're a business and you don't have as much time or you don't have the energy or interest in learning how to do it yourself, hire a company to do it. Um, here, here locally, we have a company, Deep Fried Studios, that produces podcasts in Mobile, Alabama. You can find one online. There may be other, you know, uh, companies in your location that do that. But find find those companies and do it. But so, we've never recorded an episode. Now we're recording episodes. Okay, so Mandy and I, we're sitting down. We're recording every other Tuesday. 8 a.m. We have booked from about 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. We're record. We've recorded two episodes every time. Every time we've done it, we've done two at a time. Right. Um, and that's worked out really well. We didn't have that. It wasn't in stone. We didn't have it planned. Just the first time we recorded one, I said, "Hey, do you want to do another one?" She said, "Yeah." And then every two weeks, we've recorded two at a time, and it's just worked. It's been perfect. And the topics have changed too. Like mm -hmm. they have been around what we are currently going through. We've had some topics that we had, you know pre-planned on our list that we made but then we've had some things that were like wow you know you'll say like oh this could be a great 
podcast topic when we're in the middle of a conversation. So things like that um, have popped up, and I think they've made made great topics. Yep, I agree 100%. We are um, actively, we have an active list. Um, I use a tool called Trello, so 100 times a day I'm adding stuff to all of my different tasks and projects and to-dos. But, like, yeah, one of those exactly is podcast topics. So, yeah, and I think as, exactly what you said. As we're in the middle of stuff, you know, we're, we're thinking, oh, wow, yeah, that we, we could teach in this because we just learned. We, you and I just learned in the middle of that project, so we could teach others what we, what we just went through or how can you, right? Exactly. How can we add value to others? Um, all right, so now let me fast forward. So here we are. We've recorded eight episodes, let's just say, at that point, eight episodes. We recorded eight. Now, just to add a few more details, I then had to figure out, oh, wait, we need an intro, some kind of outro. Um, so in the first eight, there was no intro. We then recorded an intro. Uh, I decided, wait, 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 I've got to find music. So when we had a staycation recently, I found the music, and I turned all of those eight audio clips where we had conversations, I turned all of those into final episode uh, files, right? So now we have eight episodes. Still no podcast. So we have no podcast launched on Simplecast, but after we recorded those eight, I felt comfortable to announce to the public Hey guys, so Mandy and I have decided to launch a podcast. We've recorded eight episodes, et cetera, et cetera. And I just made that post within this last week. Yeah, now it's official. All still not having a launched podcast. I mean, I just I just want people to understand that you can have a really giant project and it's not like you're not we're not we're not even there. Right. And we didn't even talk about it until I had eight finalized episodes yeah. of this podcast. I didn't even tell anyone that we were doing it. And so that's crazy. Now, what we're going to do, and I haven't decided how many we're going to post, so we're not just going to post one, and I haven't told you this yet, Mandy, but like, so what we're doing is we will put up, um, my thinking is six, but we'll discuss this, six to eight or whatever. We're going to put up at one time when we launch the podcast. Okay. Reason being is because if someone listens to a uh an episode and they like it and they're like, Oh cool. Let me, let me see what else they have mm-hmm. or let me hear something else. If we, if we only have one and we start, right. You see, so I want right. to go ahead and add a library of our That's episodes smart. so that people can go in and if yeah. they enjoy or like something, they can listen to some other content right away. And then we'll put us on a, a schedule of every, um, I don't know, two or two weeks or something, release a new episode or whatever. So, so here we are, those are our steps. And so if you are having a problem with looking at your project, maybe it gives you extreme anxiety or a great sense of overwhelm or um, you have no idea how you could ever do something like that Uh break that project down into chunks. And I mean, get a physical sheet of paper (laughs) and write down what is it that you're going to have to learn in order to do that project? What are the tasks that you're going to have to do? If If you break it down into a certain number of items, say it's 12, and that item number two, you're like, well, that's kind of complicated. You know, that's not just a let me sit down and do that. If you can't just sit down and do one of the items or take a moment or take an hour and just do that item, it's still too complicated and you need to break that item because that item is... good advice. Yeah, because that item isn't an item. That item is its own mini project that's beneath your large project. Right. You need to take that item, I'm going to call that a mini project, and you need to break that down into its own individual steps. Only only when you are looking at the entire project, and you can make it like an outline, like you used to write a school paper for all I care, you know, with uh, you know, A, B, C, big A, B, C, and then underneath that, one, two, three, and then underneath that, A, B, if you need to break down those individual items, do it like that just so that you can visually see what it is that you need to do. 
only when you break down that project into individual things that can be accomplished and you and you're going to only you're going to know the order that you need to do those items in, you know, in order to learn and master certain things. Only when you do that can you see the project for what it is and assign time to each one. And so I'll end on saying if you know in a week you will overestimate what you can do, but in a year's time you're going to underestimate what you can do. So if you take that project and you break it down you will be amazed at what you can do in a year's time that is excellent advice because you know i would look at something like a podcast or an event or anything like that i would look at that and i would say "Mm -mm, nope not doing it can't do it don't you know don't want to add anything else to the plate but you actually have taught me this method of taking something and breaking it down so it is feasible. If it's something that you actually really want to do, you will find a way to do it. So that, you know, that's your method. It's actually really good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And and let me just say in everyday life, we'll, we'll kind of end with this. In everyday life, if you're feeling overwhelmed, because like every day can be like a project, right? Like you have all yes. this stuff that you have to do. I tell you this often. I'm like, just, I find it very soothing and it helps me when I'm feeling overwhelmed with all the things that I have to do. I get a sheet of paper. Even though I use Trello, yeah. I use this digital method. I get yeah. a piece of paper, and I even from Trello, I write the list. I don't know why, but I write it on paper from Trello. Yeah, I visually can see in front of me what are what are all these things that I need to do. It instantly becomes less overwhelming, and I'm able to go through them right. one by one. Choose like what's the most important thing for me to do right now. Right. Because let's say that I can't do all those today. I may not be able to. Right. But I can one by one, figure out what's the most important thing for me to work on right now. What's the one thing I can do right now? And I do it. And then when I do it, you know what I do? What do you do? I scratch that sucker off yeah. the list. Yeah, satisfying I, I to mark put, it out. I put a line through it. Yeah. And then I check mark beside it. Sometimes I double check mark. I don't know. Oh, I do whatever. Yeah. It feels really good. Yeah. And then I move to the next item. Um, and so that's been really useful for me. And it physically makes me feel better if i have anxiety or overwhelm i am physically calmed by doing that and so if you have that issue or problem or you can get overwhelmed with your with your items that you have to do in a day or a week or whatever i advise you to get a sheet of paper and put a pen to it and write down what you have to do you actually remind me of that quite often Mm -hmm. when i'm in my swirls of ah Mm -hmm. there's so much going on there's so much to do and then you like oh just write it down I'm like oh it's actually not that bad exactly yeah so So. whether it's a project or whether it's your life whether it's business or life as you I think you know by now Mandy and I think that life and business is one giant adventure they all flow together and so you know we want you guys to live that with us and, and, and roll through it and enjoy that adventure and so um man thanks thanks for being with us and we'll uh we'll see you guys next time yeah peace out Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us. We'd love for you to share it, maybe with a friend, review it, and don't hesitate to reach out and say hello. You can connect with us and see the resources that we talk about at destroytheboxwith.us. That's www.destroytheboxwith.us. See ya.